Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs that sell. And be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because I have another five bonus niches for you. So in today's video, I wanna show you how you can create this design right here using Canva. This is my listing, I'm on Amazon. Um, right now. So this is an Amazon merch listing, but of course you can create this design and sell it on any platform or any product that you like. Um, and so I'm going to show you guys step-by-step step how you can do this. So the first thing we're going to do is just jump right over to Canva. So right now I am on Canva's home page and we're just going to go ahead and start with a blank design. So I'm going to go over to the right hand side where it says custom size. I'm going to be selecting 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That is my standard t-shirt size, and it will ensure that when I print, it will print at above a 300 DPI. Now, typically I optimize my designs for the darker colors as those do tend to sell better, though on certain occasions, I will optimize for lighter colors or create designs that could go on either a light or a dark shirt because we're doing a nice brightly colored design. It will go on white or black. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the background color as is for now. Now, this is a super, simple easy and fun design to make and it is a great one as school is starting up again soon and we will have that senior class of 2026 so we're going to go ahead and just start by hitting t on your keyboard that's going to pull up a text box and so what this is is a repetitive design where it says senior and it spells out 2026 so i'm just going to go ahead let's start with a capital s c and e and then the first O is going to be a two, put R and then next space. And we're just going to continue. So once you've got that written out, it's senior and you've got 2026 where the R's, I mean, for the O's would be, Ugh. it's kind of hard for me to think through this as I was typing it, but <laughs> that is what we're starting with. So this is what you should have on your page. Um, now, the first thing I'm going to do is pick a font. So it can be any font you want. I do want it to be a little bit old and a little bit fun, but beyond that, you can pick anything you like. Um, the easiest way to do this would be to go up to your font section. You can search fun. You can do display fonts. You can search for bold fonts. So there's tons of different ways you can do this. If I wanted to just hit display here, I could go through all the display fonts. Or if I wanted to type bold, I could do that. And you can just kind of start playing with these. And you're looking for something, again, that's fun, but also easy to read. So you don't want it to be something that's difficult to read. Um, and so I did play with this for a while and looked through a lot of different fonts. The one I ended up coming up with was Hobo, which I like. I think it's a fun font. It's a nice and bold, but it gives a little bit of a character. So that is what I went with there. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to play with the line and letter spacing. So to get that look where everything's nice and tight and kind of overlapping, what we're going to do is kind of click everything. If you have trouble making sure that you get all of it, sometimes you can just highlight the whole thing that will ensure you get all of it. And then we're going to go up to where you see sort of the lines up and down and side to side. Um, it says advanced settings now. It keeps changing, but that is what we're going to go with. Um, they've added this anchor text box here. That's different. Um, but we're just looking at the line spacing and letter spacing. So starting with that line spacing, I'm going to bring it all the way up so that those S's are practically touching one another, something like that. And then with the letter spacing, I am also going to bring that spacing in. So again, the letters look like they're kind of touching one another. Sometimes it gets in the way of the box and you might just move your text over so that you can see it when you're doing it. But that is pretty close to what I want, maybe even a little bit closer up and down. So maybe that line spacing even a little bit tighter. Maybe something, maybe something there is pretty close. So it's at a 0.68 is what I have it at now. And now I'm going to make that nice and big in the page. And so that's pretty cool. So what we're going to do now is pick some bright colors. So some of the bright colored designs I've seen have been very popular, especially around Etsy. Um, and so just any kind of bright colors, you don't have to pick anything specific. This is uh, specifically made for a girl. So you know, try to keep that in mind as we're picking different shades. So what I'm thinking, we'll, we'll just start with a pink and I'm just gonna go letter by letter and start picking shades. So starting with the S, you just highlight that one letter. We'll go up to text color. They've added some more colors down here in the default settings, but I'm gonna start with a pink and maybe make that a little bit 
brighter, darker, uh, maybe, maybe something there. So that's a nice bright pink. So I'm going to start with that. Next one I'm thinking, get that next E and maybe I'm going to go with some sort of a shade of yellow. So I'm going to pick yellow. I'll go up to add a new text color. And again, I can play with the shades. I want it to be really nice and bright, maybe even a little bit more yellowy, something like that. So just a real bright shade. Next, I'm thinking, oops, some sort of shade of blue or teal, maybe something like this looks pretty cool. And actually, I like the way that one looks. I might just leave that one alone. Then maybe like an orange. And so I'm just doing this one at a time and I can pick any of these shades here. That looks pretty cool. Now, the one thing I am going to do is make the 2026 all one color. So whatever color I pick for the two, I'm going to go all the way down with it so that it kind of stands out as one specific color. So I was thinking about making this like a pink, but maybe a lighter shade of pink or even more of a baby pink. So I'm going to start by picking that sort of lighter shade of maybe even a baby pink, but something bright. Maybe a little less purpley, a little more ready. And again, something just bright and light. Okay, well, we'll just go with that. So that looks that looks pretty cool. It's a nice bright pink. I can make it a little bit more on whichever shade I like. That'll do. And then let's go to the R, and I'm going to do the R. Oops, highlight that. And I'm thinking of maybe more of a tealer shade. So... Maybe something a little darker, a little brighter in the teal. So there, maybe something like that. That looks pretty cool. So now I'm going to come down to the next line. We're going to do this again. I'm thinking one more color. I might go with like a purple. Again, a nice bright shade, but nothing too dark. So something like that, I'm thinking. And now what I plan to do is go ahead and repeat some of these colors. So after the... Um, after you've picked out all your colors, it becomes a lot easier to just use the colors that you already have saved up here. So after the eh, the purple, I'm going to go ahead and just start picking the colors randomly. They don't necessarily have to be in any order. Sometimes the randomness can look cool. Other times you might want to do like a repeating, repeating colors, but oops, sometimes it's hard to pick just the letter you want. You might have to play a little bit. I'm going to go with that bright pink there again, and then kind of maybe do the yellow. And then again, for the 2026, I'm going to do them all in that light pink. And then maybe the orange here. And so I'm just going through one letter at a time and randomly selecting some colors to go with it. Maybe I'll do some teal there. Maybe the orange. Okay, so there we go. I've managed to get these all different colors. And so now we've got kind of this cool look. You can definitely see that the letters are overlapping a bit. And I like the way that that all looks. I think what I might want to do is still play with the spacing a little bit. I'm thinking I want the letters even a little bit more close together so that I get a little bit of overlapping side to side too. So let's go ahead. I'm going to play with this just a little bit more. Let's take that letter spacing just a little bit closer so I get a little overlap there and maybe the line spacing a little bit more spaced out so I'm not quite overlapping as much. Maybe something there. Good. So I'm liking that spacing a little bit better too. So I'm really getting that nice tight look. Now what I wanted to do is put an outline around this so that it would really pop on the lighter color shirt. Obviously, I know it's going to pop on a black shirt as well because I'm using these nice bright colors. So let's go ahead. We'll go to effects. I'm going to go with outline. Now it's automatically picking an outline color that kind of looks good with that first letter, which was the bright pink. I'm actually okay with this outline color. I could do it Oh, I got maybe a little bit lighter, brighter, but I'm okay with that overall shade. So maybe I'll stick with something like that. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. I don't want the outline to be too thick. So well, something there looks good. That's at about 20 right there. So 20 kind of works okay for me. I like the way that that's looking so far. And so right now I've got a really fun looking design. What I want to do now is add just little bits of flourishes, so little stars or little flowers. And if I can get that same sort of outlined look so that it all kind of comes together, that's nice too. So let's go ahead and go to the left-hand side where it says elements. We'll click that. I'll just start with like, let's say flower. 
we're going to go to graphics. And so like here's an example of a simple flower that works well. Um, some of these will let you change the colors, some of them won't. So, I mean, if you can try to get some of these different colors in there, sometimes that works. So like that looks kind of cool. The outline is a different shade. Now I know with this one, if I change the color of the outline, it's gonna change the color of the flower. And so that's a bummer, right? Because I actually wanted, see now it's making the outline more of a black. So I'm gonna stick with the brown so I can keep that same kind of lighter shade there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with this first one. The outline's a slightly different color, but that's okay, because I do think that this one sort of looks the best after playing with it. So what I might do is just sort of throw that flower in some different places so I can hit Control and D to duplicate it so I keep it kind of the same size. And I can go ahead, Control D, and put it just in a few random places where I think it might kind of look cool in the design. So something like that. And I'm not afraid, again, to kind of overlap things because everything is sort of overlapping here, that that overlap look kind of works well. And then I was thinking maybe some of those just sort of retro diamond. So let's try retro diamond and see what kind of comes up. The diamond one here, that one kind of works. Let's see, I'm gonna change the color here. Maybe pick like the teal. That one's kind of cool, so I might take this diamond and you now again, I'm not afraid to kind of overlap things. I might even do something like flip it around so that it's going the other way and that kind of works for me. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. And I'm just sort of playing with the placement of some of these, so something like that looks kind of cool. Maybe I duplicate it, so I hit Control-D to duplicate it. Maybe I bring it down and I... Again, I can add that same diamond here. I can always flip it back so that it's going the opposite direction so that they don't look exactly identical. And so something like that looks cool. And I can even see if I can find some other ones too. So like here's one that has three dots and I like that as well. And so I can take that three dot one maybe and add it over here something like that or that four dot one maybe i make that one a different color maybe a bright yellow on that one looks cool hit Control d and maybe do that one one more time just wherever i think it might look cool okay so maybe there and now what i want to do with the diamonds is i want to give them that same outline so everything else kind of has that outline i'm going to go ahead and outline all the diamonds in that same color that i used for the for the text so i can go ahead um i can actually start by finding the exact color i used for the outline here so i can go to effects and i can find this color here i can go to add new color and i can just copy the hex code here so i can go ahead copy that it's going to make it easy so now when I go to outline this, I can get that exact shade. So I'm gonna click on like my stars. I'm gonna go to edit. And we'll scroll, scroll down to where it says shadows. We're gonna use the outline feature here. And now I can go ahead and paste that, um, that hex code in here so I can get that exact same shade. And then I can play with the, you know, how thick I want that outline to be, something there. And I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process for each one of these. So I'm gonna change that hex code and then go ahead and just change my outline to however thick I want it to be. So that looks cool. Do the same thing here. So that looks pretty cool. I might make a couple little micro adjustments here. And so overall, I'm happy with the way that looks. It's a nice, fun design. Um, the colors really pop. It looks good on a white um, background. If I was to go ahead and change the background here, let's say to black, the design is still going to pop even on black because, again, we use some nice bright colors. Um, so it really is going to look good on a light shirt or a dark shirt. And it's a fun one. I would make sure to specifically market this to, you know, senior girls. Um, but this would just be a nice, fun, um, you know, shirt for for you know, seniors in high school. So once you have it the way you want it, if you want to resize it or move it up the page or anything like that, we can just go ahead, left click somewhere down in the bottom and highlight over everything. And then what you do is hit group. And once it's grouped, now we can move the whole thing together as one group, which means that now I can go ahead and center it, raise it up, make it a little bit bigger. 
So something there. And that looks pretty cool like that. I do like that. I might move it a little to the left so that I'm centering the text maybe a little bit more than the graphics because I know that star sticks out a little bit more. So I do want the text to look a little bit more centered. But that looks pretty awesome. So now what I would do is go ahead and title it. I'm just going to put senior and then 2026. And we'll go ahead, go to share. You're going to download. It's a PNG. You're going to want a transparent background. And then we'll just go ahead and hit download. And now what we can do is take that PNG and upload it to any print company that you use. So whether you're using Printful or Printify or you're on Amazon Merch or you're on something like Redbubble, we would just go ahead then and upload that PNG. And then we can print this out. And again, we can put it on any product that we like. As long as it's not bigger than a t-shirt, um, it's going to print at above a 300 DPI. Um, if you did want to do something like this on a blanket, obviously we would need to make that size a little bit bigger. Um, but again, for anything that's t-shirt size or smaller, it's going to be great quality. If you have any questions about this, drop it in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. I hope you guys are doing really well with your sales. Um, if you are interested, I do have a beginner course right now that's on sale on Etsy, and I'll put a link in the comment section. I have a link in the description below this video. It's like 20 bucks on sale right now, and it pretty much goes over everything that you would need to know if you were brand new and trying to start a print on demand business. Um, so that is available to you if you're interested. And again, because you guys were so patient and you did wait until the end of the video, I do have another five bonus niches for you. And as the 4th of July is over, it is now somehow officially Halloween season. So for the next four videos, I have some Halloween niches for you guys. <laughs> So without any more waiting, these are going to be your five bonus Halloween niches that you can be working on right now. So niche number one, which please. <laughs> number two, this is boo sheet. And I've seen that done with like a ghost, it's funny. Uh, number three, if zombies chase us, I'm tripping you. <laughs> number four, just the tip, I promise. And you, I've seen that done with like a, a knife for like a serial killer. And then number five, and this one is a good entire fourth quarter shirt wrapped into one due to infl uh, inflation. This is my Halloween costume, Thanksgiving shirt, and Christmas sweater all rolled into one there. Um, so I'm sure you guys can find some really fun ways that you can design for these. Halloween stuff is already up and on sale. Um, and so people do start shopping for Halloween stuff pretty early. So it is not too early for you guys to start throwing your Halloween stuff up if you haven't already started working on some of that. Um, and again, any questions you have, drop it in the comments section below. Hope you guys are doing well, and I do hope to see you guys again next week. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.